It looks like J.K. Rowling has chalked up quite a significant single-handed victory. She's a fantastic. Um, hasn't she? I mean, she basically named um, trans women and then said in her tweets about them that they were men. Uh, she then said, I'm coming home to Scotland soon. Edinburgh Police, arrest me when I, when I land. Be delighted, be delighted to be cross-examined by you. Edinburgh Police have now said, Scottish Police have now said, no offence has been committed. But actually talked talk about victory, or was the law misunderstood? Because the Scottish well, you said government... This yesterday, didn't because you? the Scottish government said, from the beginning, misgendering somebody uh, would, would not be a crime. Hmm. It was not a crime. Uh, so <clears throat> she's made a point, I suppose, she, in a way, she, you could argue she's clarified the law well, and made it clear publicly, but she may never have been at risk in the they're, first place. But on the se very same day, the police say they're not going to arrest her or anything, 3,800... Uh, cases the police are now looking at in 24 hours under this new hate crime law in Scotland, that they're, they're going to be completely overwhelmed. Well, and that's yes. the thing. Does this mean that this is all going to be unworkable yeah. because of how it's all unfolded, yeah. because of the reaction to it? People are going to think, um, I, I am a trans woman, I, I'm entitled to be called a man if, and, and taking the JK as no, you're not. They will say if somebody like JK, they're going to complain, they're going to be swamped with it, complaints. It, it, the Labour Party backed this law change in Scotland. It's a recipe for disaster. It, it, cover, it covers other people, remember, too. It's because it's age, disability, colour, uh, as well as the trans. The, tra the trans issue. But, of course, that is so heavily contested. Yeah. You can imagine people just sitting online and complaining probably both ways. I mean, 3,000 right. complaints in one day. Mm. It turned out that's astonishing. We were overwhelmed, inundated with messages from people living in Scotland yesterday, vastly on the side of repealing this law. Yeah. Of saying that now this has happened, um, as you say, maybe maybe what's happened with, with J.K. Rowling has shown that the law is actually unworkable. Yeah. Um, Labour, as you say, Labour, Labour supported it. Um, but not it in England. Now, Mr Jones, would you, would you consider an act to repeal it? Is it workable? Well, it's an act in Scotland, so that's, that's the question for the Scottish Parliament. Yeah, but what's your opinion? You've got, you've got an opinion on it. What, what do you think? I'm just, just about to give it to you. Oh, I, I beg your pardon. I do, I do um, apologise. Go on. Sorry, you caught me whilst I was gulping some tea. I wasn't quite <laughs> expecting you to come back to me. Forgive me. Okay. Um, uh, the, 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 the position in Westminster, as I say, this is a Scottish issue, but the position in, in Westminster is that uh, the law as it stands is sufficient uh, in England and Wales. So we, we will not be um, uh, copying what the Scottish Parliament have done. I think this is a clear example as to why what the SNP have done in Holyrood is unacceptable. Look, what are you trying to do here? You're trying to get to a position of tolerance and respect for people's um, freedoms, but also people's correct, uh, protected characteristics. And Putting a criminal law in place is not going to get you to that position of tolerance. It should be it should be cut, done through um, uh, listening and understanding, and as I said, a respect for people's uh, uh, rights and their own their own views. The law, as it stands, says that if somebody has um, uh, gone through a gender reassignment, their transgender identity is protected under the Equality Act. If um, somebody has through uh, through from a position of hostility um, caused a hate crime. And that's something that the police would have to investigate in the same way as if a hate crime was caused against someone for any other protected characteristics, whether they were women or gay or, or have disabilities. Uh, that quality law has existed in the UK for a very long time. It's something mm. that the Labour Party um, instigated when it was last, last in government. That regime has, test, has, has stood the test of time yeah. in England and Wales. We think it works well as it's currently drafted. Um, and, and the SNP are now realising that you can't just criminalise um, often difficult and tested um, uh, uh, debates that we need to work through as a, uh, as, a, as, a, as a population in this country. But what do you, what do you make of, of J.K. Rowling herself as an individual? What, what's your feeling about her? I mean, basically, what, what she's in effect is saying is that you can make all the changes you like in transgender in, in either direction, but what you can't change is biology and you can't change chromosomes, the XX chromosome or the XY chromosome. You can't change that. So, in, in, in her opinion, and that of many, many others, um, a transgender woman remains biologically a man, and she's saying it is not an offence, and it's not even cruel to say that. What, what's your feeling about her position on that, specifically? Well, I think she's right that the, that the law as it stands in Scotland is, is ineffective for the reasons I've just set out, oh. and she challenged the police in Scotland to implement it, and that hasn't happened. Um, look, we could get into a debate about um, uh, chromosomes. Uh, my first degree was in human bioscience, so it's a personal interest of mine. But I think uh, the fact of the matter here, from a from a policy perspective, 
is that all of us should make sure that we're having a reasonable conversation here because it's ultimately people in their um, their lives at the heart of this debate, whether it's women who rightly want to protect um, their protected characteristics and lots of the policies that have flown from that. Uh, you know, women have fought for these rights for very many decades, their right to have uh, those protections in law, uh, but also for transgender people who have the right to identify as being transgender. That's how they uh, live uh, their truth, not to sound too American about it. Um, <laughs> and they should be given the freedom and respect to do that. Now, there are some difficult, knotty policy questions in that that, you know, don't have easy answers to them. But we should find a way to be able to talk about those with a sense of tolerance, love and respect, as opposed to uh, criminalising people's views and behaviour. Um, while we have you, can I talk to you about, uh, well, the polls I know you're going to be happy to talk to us about, but um, <laughs> we understand that there have been no complacency pep talks going on within Labour <laughs> that actually, you know, don't get too carried away with it being a foregone conclusion because, uh, you know, it will all come down to the day. But also, there has been a sharp fall in Labour membership, hasn't there, over the past two months? A drop of 23,000, according to figures released to the National Executive Committee, and this does seem to be over the policy in Gaza, this stance on the ceasefire, as well as the U-turn on the green investment. Is this a, a worry for you? Well, first of all, you're right to say there is no complacency, and we get told that every single uh, week, uh, because polls are not a prediction of the future, they're a snapshot of today. We don't know when the general election is going to be. Um, and whilst the Conservatives have clearly failed on pretty much every measure over the past 14 years, uh, we know we've got a huge amount of work to do to win the trust, uh, respect and votes of voters across the country, not least because we performed so badly under Jeremy Corbyn in 2019 that the scale of the challenge uh, is historic in size um, and huge operationally for us to uh, achieve. Uh, in terms of the, the Labour Party membership numbers, I saw that reported I've not seen any data as to reasons why those members have left. I don't. I presume they get asked when they leave, but I don't actually know. Uh, membership numbers in parties go up and down all of the time. There was obviously a huge surge in membership in the Labour Party under Jeremy Corbyn, and many of Jeremy Corbyn's supporters um, uh, preferred a party of protest as opposed to a party that has to make difficult decisions around the trade-offs in its preparation for government in the hope that we get to run the country. They might have chosen to have left the Labour Party for that reason, that's fine. That's their decision. All I know is we've still got plenty of Labour Party members across the country, I think more than any other party still, working hard week in, week out, knocking on doors, talking to members of the public, okay. um, okay. answer their questions. Can, can I just ask you a kind of a, a really fundamental question? Um, I mean, you, you, you mentioned the Labour Party's performance in the last election under Corbyn. Uh, and at least then one knew exactly what Labour was for. And under Tony Blair, when he came in in 97, you knew what Labour was for. You could, you could put it in a couple of sentences. It's very hard today to know what Labour is, what it's for. I mean, if, if an alien were to come down, an intelligent being from another planet, and sit opposite you and say, what are you for? How would you sum it up? Well, it's very clear. Keir Starmer set out his five missions for our country a long time ago. I might ask you to set it in a sentence what you thought Jeremy Corbyn stood for or indeed what Tony Blair stood for. Tony Blair had a pledge card, you'll remember, which had five priorities on it. We have five missions in the Labour Party now. Uh, the manifesto is in draft form at the moment. We were hoping for a May election so that we could get this published, but Rishi Sunak has bottled that and has not called it. In the normal way, manifestos get published once the election has been called, and that will set out in uh, as much detail as anybody wants, quite frankly, right. how those five missions will be implemented in terms of policy, legislation and spending priorities um, across the country. What people will know is that under a Labour government, you can see that our party has changed under Keir Starmer's leadership and that when it comes to our five missions on getting the economy back on track, the NHS backlog sorted, our schools fixed and opportunities for young people, getting policing back on our streets and protecting our borders and decarbonising the power system by 20 at 30 in order to deliver our net zero commitments, that we have a very clear, strong plan for turning the page on 14 oh, years of failure from the services yep. and starting that decade of national renewal. OK, we'll, we'll, we'll leave you to slurp your tea. <laughs> we'll, leave, we'll leave you to slurp your tea in peace, Mr Jones. We're Thanks out of time. Thank you very much. You know,